guys, I'm going to show you how to make an HTML survey just like this that you can make and run on any operating system in less than 10 minutes. And once you're done with the survey, you can export your results pretty easily. Let's give it a go. Now, the first thing we want to do is just create a new text document. So let's go ahead and do that. We can worry about the name later. I'm just going to open it up and I'm going to put in the HTML part here. And basically what we're doing is we're creating sections and we're telling it how to look. So this right here, this is the title that appears in the upper left corner here. So here's an example of that right there. This is what it'll look like when the HTML part's done. So that's that right there. Now this right here, this is that right here. So that's your header. Okay, so now we're creating a section here for the survey form. And so what we have here are our questions. That's what these are right here. So first, this one right here is a text box. And you can see the enter ID right there. That's this right here. That's a little placeholder. So as soon as you type something in, it'll go away. Okay. And so that's, that's the first question right there. So we're creating a div and we're ending the div right there. And here's our second question here. We're asking, are you a veteran of the armed services? And this is a drop down menu. This right here isn't really an option. It's just so, you know, um, tells people to click one basically. Select one itself isn't really data. The yes or the no is. So that's what that is. It's better than it just being blank. It's just more clear for the user. And then my favorite one is this right here. And this is the slider. So if you want to change the minimum to something else, so if you want this to be like one and that to be 100, you can do that. Uh, what I have right here, this right there is uh, that. So I'm kind of showing where to start. And this right here shows where to end. Okay. So you can modify that however you want to. Okay. And then this button right here, that's that right there. But currently, as we have our code here, all we're doing is showing what a form looks like. We're not actually having it do anything. It can't do anything in just HTML. We're gonna have to put in some JavaScript. So right now, let's go ahead and save this as an HTML file. And just call this new survey.html. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, so it looks like the example that I just showed you, but watch, if we hit submit, it does nothing. Okay, if we hit submit here, it does. All right, so we gotta work on that part now. All right, I'm gonna close this out here. And this time, now that we actually created the HTML file, let's right click on it, open with, and we can go back to Notepad. That's it's not my first preference. I typically use Visual Studio Code, but uh, just for this video, we can use Notepad, that's fine. Okay. And now what we wanna do is we wanna throw in the JavaScript somewhere. So we can put it right here. And I labeled this a little bit more so you can kind of see. So first though, before we get into that, when you do JavaScript, you wanna start the script, you wanna end the script, okay? All right, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time explaining each little thing here because I did put labels here to make this a quicker video. And plus, if you don't understand certain sections, you can always just go like this, you know, copy, and then paste into the window for chat GPT and say, hey, what does this do? And I often do that myself. So uh, that's why I'm not gonna go in great detail here, but you can kind of get an idea, you know, what each thing does here. So you can kind of see that, you know, this is the area where we're creating an array. We're making a common delimited data set, that right there too. And right here is the name of the export. So once you hit submit, that's what the name of the file is going to be. So you can change that to whatever you want. All right. So now that we have this, let's hit save. And let's try to open it. Okay, it looks no different than before, but that's that's not a big deal. Let's try to put some data in here. We'll say yes. And we'll hit submit. Okay, looks like it worked. Let's just open this to make sure that we got real data. And yep, looks good. All right, now that we got something up and running, let's make a couple tweaks here. So this 
let's say we want to add uh, maybe. So we go back here and we'll create a new option for maybe. Okay, let's hit save. And we can reload or refresh, whatever your browser tells you to do. And there we go, we got our maybe. And let's just make sure that it exports. Okay, there we go. Now, let's say you don't like storing this as a string. Let's say you want yes to be one, you want no to be zero, and you want maybe to be two. That's all you do right there. You just change that option value right there. Let's hit save. We'll reload. And let's just put in an ID here. Some values and let's look at this. Okay, so now we have a number stored there. Now I purposely made this survey short so you could copy and paste this whole set of code to ChatGPT and say, hey, I want a fourth checkbox question, for example. So I'm not gonna add it in, but I'm just gonna demonstrate for you. So I'm gonna type in like, give me a fourth question below with a checkbox, okay? So I just hit Control A to highlight everything. I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna paste it to ChatGPT just to show you how this works. So you can see right here that it responded with a new question. So that could be question number four. So that's how that works. And that's why I kept this so short. Really helpful, I think. You might be thinking, okay, this is all kind of cool, but I don't want to have to deal with a bunch of CSV files. And yeah, that makes sense. Ideally, we just have JavaScript append each survey's results to an existing CSV file. But since JavaScript's a client or browser-based language, we can't really do that without some kind of server-side language to supplement it, like PHP or Node. That's okay, because I'm gonna show you how to merge all the CSVs in the folder into one file using PowerShell and Windows. And for those using Linux or Mac, check out the video description how to merge CSVs from the command line. Okay, so what I wanna do is find PowerShell. So if you're asked, hit yes. All right, so once you're in PowerShell, what you want to do is you want to find your directory. So for me, I need to get to my D drive. And since JavaScript and code, my subdirectory there, there's a space. I need to go like this, CD quote JavaScript code. All right, so there I'm at that one subfolder. I need to go to my next one. Just go to CD survey. And if you ever want to just see if you're in the right place, I just hit DIR. And you can see that those are the same files. All right, so I'm going to throw this in. And I'll provide this in the video description, so don't worry. So this is what I'm adding right there. And what we're doing is we're combining all those CSVs into one. And this is what the combined file is going to be called. So you can change it to whatever you want. So I'm going to make this smaller so you can kind of see what happens in the background. I'm going to hit enter. And there it is right there. So let's open it up. All right, we have our data set. We can see right here, we got everything right there, all combined into one. Anyway, I tried to keep this video short. I could have easily talked for an hour, but that's just not what this channel's all about. I like to make things quick and easy and just allow people to ask questions. But in the meantime, I really appreciate you watching. Have a good one, everyone, and I'll have a new video next week for you to watch. Take care.